Welcome back to Greels Reels, the podcast where I get to talk with athletes that I've had the privilege of getting to know through working in the crazy world of sports. Today, I'm joined by middle li- middle linebacker. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> middle blocker, three-time academic All-Canadian, close personal friend that I've had the privilege of getting to know through my time at the University of Ottawa, Dana Bullock. How's it going, Dana? <laughs> I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Uh, do you think you could play middle linebacker? Um, if I knew what it was, I'd give a more honest answer, but I'm going to just go with no okay. to be safe. All right. Yeah. All right. So we're going to start back in the time of high school where I was reading a little article about your Crothers Colt championship and how you captained your team to the first undefeated and ending in a championship season in school history. <laughs> this might be harder than what I thought it Sorry, did. my life's a joke. So <laughs> gotta focus. Okay. Okay, but yeah, how, uh, four years later, how does that still resonate with you? Um, yeah, honestly, that's probably my fondest high school memory when I think back on it. Um, it took us a while. Uh, in the ninth grade, when I started off at high school, there was um, a region-wide... Um, I don't know, cancellation of sports and extracurriculars to do like teacher strikes and stuff. And then the 10th grade, we went all the way to the finals and lost. Same in the 11th grade. So then um, to round out my high school career, it was kind of nice to uh, finally get the gold medal that we were searching for, especially being um, an athletic-based high school. It was nice to finally have the hard work pay off. But um, yeah, I don't know if I'd say I necessarily led them there. I had a really good, <laughs> really good group of girls with me. A lot of them went on to play varsity and uh they all played club during high school and stuff so we were just fortunate to have a competitive team with a great coach and we did it <laughs> yeah i was reading a uh, article where you were quoted as saying third time's the charm and which made me laugh because knowing you it was <laughs> a very dana quote short <laughs> and to the point 100 percent uh I, uh I don't remember that but if you would ask me what i thought i said i'd probably <laughs> <Yeah>. say that <laughs> Okay, so after high school and leading into the recruitment process, I mean, every sport has uh, different strategies of how players can get their name out there and stuff like that. I think it would be a good thing to look at in terms of the recruitment process for women's volleyball and how that all works. So what are your experiences there? Um, Well, I started considering it and looking into it, um, I think, in the 11th grade. It's crazy now because it happens so young, especially in the States. Girls are signed and recruited by, like, 10th grade is the latest. Like, that's it. They're done, committed, whatever. Um, And Canada is a little different. Um, It's usually around the 11th grade and as late as the 12th grade, but my club coaches were really proactive. They told us to start um, looking into it if you're interested, helped us make recruitment videos, gave us tips for that, Um, told us how to contact coaches that we were interested in, how to get recognized, that kind of thing. so it's mostly just putting yourself out there, being comfortable with reaching out to people, um, making sure you're doing it and not your parents, because as far as I know, every university coach that I've talked to really did not like that. They want to see kind of the initiative taken by the athletes themselves. And yeah, just kind of showcasing what you got the best you can um, to hopefully get recruited. And. So that's one thing that I find different with uh, women's volleyball uh, than any other sport and what you mentioned with the fact of early commitment. Like sometimes you see people, you know, take years of college and in football and hockey or junior where it's like, you know, they're they're almost like 21, 22 and and finally committing to a university. Why is it so early as, as you see early as like grade 10 where people choose to go to the program that they wish? Um, I partly think it's that it's such a competitive um, sport in terms of recruitment. The teams are a lot smaller than, obviously, football and hockey and stuff like that. So coaches want to start development younger, and girls want to start getting looked at younger just because there's fewer spots. Um, another thing is that there's no, like, in-between, between club and, and university or college or wherever you're going, whereas, like, you can play junior hockey or you can go play, like, there's junior versions of football, I think. I don't know. Um, but there's nothing for, for volleyball. It's either you go straight into it or it's kind of, it's kind of past your time. So, um, the early you start, the early you know, I guess, and you can just work from there with coaches. A lot of girls will train early with universities that they're committed to and stuff like that. But 
Um, it doesn't always happen that way, but it's just been so common nowadays, even more so when I was going through it. So. And you obviously ended up committing at the University of Ottawa. Um, so take me through your recruitment process and kind of the things that you enjoyed about the school and, and why the decision was made to come here. Um, I made my decision really late. I think it was actually December of my grade 12 year that I actually, um, I think I came out to visit in November and officially committed in December. Um, but Ottawa wasn't even on my radar until really, really late. I was visiting a bunch of schools. I had visited a bunch of schools. Um, and nothing had really felt like the place I wanted to spend my four years. Um, so I did a last minute search and I noticed that, uh, Ottawa was kind of low on middle blockers. So I reached out to Lionel. He got back to me really, really fast. Um, came up for a visit and it was just mostly the girls on the team at the time that maybe come here. There's like other schools that I'd go to that they wouldn't like learn my name. I was just the recruit. They'd talk about me as the recruit right in front of me. I'm like, sweet guys, I'd come right here. But um, it did not happen here. We've always been a small team, so I think that helps. Um, but it was just like, it felt like home right away, which is really nice. So that was probably the number one drawing factor to bring me here. But Now the city in itself, what are some things that uh, really enlightens you about Ottawa? Um, I just was, I've never really been a small town person. I'm not like a city person, so I like being so close to downtown so I can go out and do stuff. Um, but yeah, just having access to everything really close by is probably the biggest thing for me. Um, and having a variety of stuff too. With so much stuff comes to Ottawa that I can go see that I wouldn't experience in, in smaller towns or university towns that I visited otherwise. So, um, I've had like a lot of opportunities here just because I've been in the city and it's just fun being able to go out and about and do stuff. Okay, so you mentioned that uh, Ottawa was low on middle blockers when you were when you were looking at. One thing I wanted to touch on is just trying to find your position within the sport of volleyball because there are some positions that you know left side, right side. There's similar tasks and roles and opportunity and um, responsibilities. What kind of differs between? those positions and then eventually finding your spot because I know in that uh, championship with your high school team you were playing right side and then going into university you made the switch into that middle blocker role so what kind of separates well it's kind of hard because starting off in volleyball I find that you're kind of just thrown into it no one really has a starting position in at least when I started in 14U it's like there's six of you on the court just get the ball over and then we're, we're laughing but um as soon as it starts to progress, as far as um, the distribution of positions, I've always been one of the tallest, so naturally I would just be put in the middle. Um, so I played middle most of my career. The only time I really played right side was um, at high school, at my high school and in my 16U career, or my club year. Um, and I don't know how I got away with that still. Like, I don't remember why they let me do it. <laughs> it was fun, but I don't remember why. Um, in high school, I kind of just forced it on my coach because I never got to play back row or play defense in club, and I just really wanted to. So I snuck my way in there. Luckily, it went well. But um, as far as getting to the next level, size is a big thing. Um, a lot of girls will play club um, volleyball and be like middle blockers, but then go to university and be moved to the outside just because they're smaller. Um, I don't know. We've always been a smaller team here, so that's the main reason why I stayed in the middle. Um, but I also get away with it just because I'm, I'm quicker than a lot of middles are. So if I can beat the other ones, then it doesn't really matter my size. Um, but yeah, it's just like finding what works for you. Like some middle blockers have other talents, like they're a lot bigger than me, hit a lot harder. But my speed helps me for sure. Um, I'm just tactically smart, which helps me a lot. Um, and then as far as right side goes, there's just, I don't know, it's a different way of approaching the ball and different defensive positioning that I never really had a lot of experience in so it never really was an option for me here as much as I wanted it to be but um yeah it, it's kind of hard to say because I don't really know much about right side <laughs> but. okay yeah no but uh going back into the middle position and the middle blocking and you touched on some aspects of it but what do you think kind of separates a great middle blocker from a good middle blocker um, like I said before, definitely tactics. Like, I'm not saying I'm, like, the best. But uh, just knowing when and what is going to score. Um, because it changes so often depending who you're matched up against. And um, the ball that you're given. 
just knowing all your options and be able to make the, the right call really fast um, is super helpful. Um, like some, some middles are big and whatever can hit hard, like I said, but they'll just hit right into a smaller block like I am just because I know where they're going. Um, same thing, speed helps a lot because a lot of girls who are just thrown in the middle because they're big uh, makes them a little less agile. So because I'm slightly smaller, it helps me move fast. Um, and I'm a really good behind the setter attacker. So I jump off of one foot and I beat them that way because I don't really know where I'm going, which is hilarious. Um, but other than that, uh, being able to read the setter, figure out where they're going, um, just getting to know the teams you're against and doing a lot of video, you know, figuring them out. Um, I think it just comes down to smarts a lot more than, than people think initially. So what are some key strategies to figuring out how to read the setters that you come up against? Um, again, it's a lot of, um, like repetition and experience my first year or second year when I hadn't played a lot, like I really didn't know much, but being in my fourth year, like I know which setters tend to, um, set opposite motion. Like if they're moving forward, they're going to flip it. Or if they're moving backwards, they're going to send it to the left side, stuff like that. Um, knowing who the hot hitters are on each team. So just any ball that's kind of out of system, they're going to release to whoever's on that game. Um, and just knowing every hitter's favorite shots to kind of be in the right spot, no matter what is probably the best advice I could give. Okay, so now we talked about on-court performance, but then off-court performance, you have definitely deemed yourself with consistent and... <laughs> oh, Dana, you're killing me. <laughs> with consistent and great academic performance, you've... <laughs> oh, my. You, you've won academic All-Canadian now for the last three years, and, I mean... Who knows? Probably, you know, you go four for four at the end of this academic season. That's the dream. <laughs> but uh, why has that been such an important uh, feat for you to, to get? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Academics have always been big in my family. Um, I've been lucky to have some very intelligent parents and a really, really smart older brother. So I kind of grew up... Um, caring about that kind of thing and I've always had high expectations for myself more so in that just because I understand that I have you know the ability to ability to do well um I tried really hard in school in elementary school like starting the fifth grade I was like I'm gonna be smart now and I was like whoa it actually happened <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy and then so from there I think I just had the expectation for myself always to do well um and somehow I've managed to keep it up which is great um a little unbelievable for me sometimes but it's uh it's nice to have the hard work pay off I guess so I think the uh the best thing or the most recognizable thing with it too is that you've had it for all three years first year second year and third year and I find a lot of students they struggle with you know adjusting from high school to university and that's where they kind of see a little bit of dip in their grades but I mean uh being able to get academic all Canadian your first year, what uh, what practices did you put into place to just you know make sure that the culture shock and transition of high school to college or university went smoothly? Um, well, I've never really had a problem with time management. I think my biggest thing is that I just know when I have enough time to do something and when I don't, and I never really let myself get past the point. Um, of not having time to finish something. So I've always managed to keep up with stuff fairly well. Um, so that's a big thing. Um, and I'm just kind of lucky that the program I'm in and interested in plays to my strengths as a student and um, as like an academic, I guess you could say. Um, whereas like I know some people get into programs that they really, really like, but there's part of it that's not their strong suit. Being in communications, reading and writings. Um, always been my thing so it's kind of let me slide through it with a bit of ease that I didn't expect to have so yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so you're ending off the semester now with your volleyball career coming to a close how do you think you're going to stay in touch with the game post-graduation um, well, for a little bit, I don't plan on it. I'm going to take a little break. Uh, I think it's just uh, about time for me to step away for a little, seeing as it's been such a big part of my life for the last 
10 years, basically. Um, but I'm going to still be in Ottawa, so I'll still be around the team. Um, like, I'm so close with all the girls, so I'm obviously going to keep in touch with them. Um, like, our coaches know that I'm always willing to help out with, with new middle recruits and stuff like that, so I'm sure I'll be showing up at practices here and there and coming out to the games to support. Um, and I can see myself coaching maybe in the future. I did a little um, developmental stuff when I was going through club and university and helping kids out, um, which is nice, but um, I think that's that's my plan. I don't really plan on exploring the option of going pro or anything like that. I'm gonna get back into, you know, my long my long lived dream of becoming a professional soccer player. No, that was a joke. <laughs> but I'm absolutely playing house league soccer. <laughs> Catch me on the field. You want to win soccer if you need, if you need a new member, sign me up. But yeah, that's pretty much it. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, I mean, in retrospect now, looking back at all of your time on the court, is there any favorite memories that stick out? Um, It's hard to say. It all kind of blurs together, to be honest. There's definitely some games um, that I remember that stand out, and I wasn't even on the court for a lot of them. I remember my first year, um, we won our matchups against Montreal. We went um, three and one against them like out of our four games. And it was some of the craziest games that I've ever played in or or um, even watched just because they were top 10 in the country and they were the you know favorites to win every single time. But um, we almost swept them for the season, which was crazy. And it was kind of what really got me excited for university ball. So I, probably the best memories, just big games. Okay. Would you rather a big kill or a big block? Oh, big block for sure. Why is that? Um, just because it, it shows that I outsmarted the other team. Um, it just gets me way more fired up because I disappointed them. <laughs> and that's just always the best. <laughs> if you could play any other position on the court, which one would it be? Realistically, right side, because that's the one I probably have the best potential to actually transition to but um if I could actually be a libero that'd be sweet because I've never played back row or haven't since I was 16 years old so that'd be a fun little mix in but I'd be garbage at it so if you could recruit any athlete from any sport at any level to join your volleyball team who are you picking what (sighs) to like my team right now to your fantasy team a bit of volleyball? Yeah. <sighs> That's hard. I don't know. That's really hard. I feel like it's hard to bring any <laughs> athlete into just a volleyball team like a year to it. I remember when I was younger being just absolutely obsessed with Darcy Tucker, like the when he played on the Leafs, because I remember sitting in front of the TV and watching him take his helmet off and hit another player with it, and I thought it was hilarious. In hindsight, I sound psychotic and I don't know why I'm so interested in it he's the only person who comes to mind right now <laughs> but um I don't know I just want to bring out any player who's ever said that volleyball is easy and just make them try it <laughs> and just laugh <laughs> but yeah I don't know that's a tough one I love how Darcy Tucker comes to mind the... so out of the blue too like I know absolutely nothing about hockey but I'm like that guy was cool. Like, <laughs> he did that thing. <laughs> okay. And now this is the podcast that I told you about and you were struggling to find a topic, but it's where we, I, well, I guess we, I hand the mic over to you and you get to discuss whether it's a life story or a fun fact or a, anything that you want to talk about, we're going to chat about. Man. I'm so uninspired right now. Um, I don't know. Rob, you're graduating right now, too. <laughs> Let's make the focus on you. What what is what are you gonna miss the most about being around me every day? <laughs> I think honestly, the classes that I've had with you have been uh the funnest, whether it was when we won third with the video competition with us, me, you, Reed josh and nick shout out nick for yeah you. Sh- shout out nick for basically creating that whole thing yeah um yeah we 
it, it was kind of a team, but Nick Nick really pulled through. Uh, I, I think we got robbed. I think we got robbed. Um, I think we should have been first. We did. I can't even uh, remember what won because it was just like the fact that we got special, third. You know? it, uh, we won like a CD, like a mixtape. Yeah, a mixtape. I was like, who is this? I, I've never played it. I don't know where it's I don't know where now. I put mine either. I uh, hope that guy's doing well. But yeah, no, it's been it's been fun. I think for, for me and like my experience at the University of Ottawa, it's just like I come from a small town where like, I mean, I never really knew about the university. And like I was, the first time I was ever in Ottawa was when I moved to Ottawa. So, you know, just the fact that I found this city and this university has really like embraced me as one of their own. I, like it's something that I'm forever going to be grateful for. And it's, you know, people like you that have, have, have done that. Right. So yeah, I think that's, that's what I'll miss the most. Oh, that was thanks, nice, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Cute. <laughs> okay. But yeah, that's, that's it. We're recording the podcast first as opposed to the video because We've got a little competition going on, and there's a debate that sparked up over Christmas about who carries who in the classroom with one of our other classmates, <laughs> Reed Kessler. And personally, I think he's out of the... I think it comes down to me versus you. Dude, no way. I... Yeah, there's a debate on who does who I said does it to him, but work. I'll say it to you. You guys would be nothing without me. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're going to do a little Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader challenge there now. And if you get the question wrong... You're going to get some egg on your face. We've got six eggs that are raw, six eggs that are hard-boiled. If you get a question wrong, you got to smash it on top of your head. We're going to start asking some questions there soon. So if you're listening to the podcast, that episode is already out. I'm going to win. I already know that. The so. irony is that we just talked about me being like smart in school, and I'm going to get destroyed. <laughs> Ask me any math question, and I'm just done for. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, I don't think... I, I think in terms of you know who helps who in the classroom more. I think I think Reed's in third. Uh, that's just guaranteed. You know what? Sorry, Reed. He, he said he wanted to be a guest on the podcast at, at some point, so we'll, we'll chat about that. Start then. passing your notes we'll, along, and we'll think about it. Yeah, Reed. we'll we'll argue that fact again. And I think between me and you, it could be a toss up, depending on the day. So are you? Anyway, we're, we're gonna not put, getting this right now. Okay. Well, we're gonna eventually be getting into it with that video. So. <laughs> Make sure to check that out. Dana, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me, Rob. It was a blast. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so sarcastic. That's just who I am. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, okay, make sure to check Jan- uh, Jana. Jana out on... Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> on social media. No, make sure to check... Te- <laughs> Make sure to check Dana out on her social media platforms. Rob, if I'm not famous by the end of this, I swear to God. <laughs> Alright, this has been another episode of Greels Reels. In the meantime, stay best kind.